Thank you. Thanks everybody for coming. Thanks everybody for being here tonight. <coughs> That's uh, if you're looking at your program uh, and you uh, and you are one of the sharper knives in the drawer, you might know that that's not Miss Jones. That was Song for My Father. So we jumped to Song for My Father. We're playing Song for My Father. First in this concert, we just did that. We're going to Miss Jones now. Song for My Father, written by Horace Silver. <coughs> written by Horace Silver on an album, Song for My Father, uh, from like 1954, I think. Uh, it's a cool story. Horace Silver, his father was uh, native Portuguese. He was actually from the Cape Verde, Cape Verde Island. Horace Silver's father, and uh, Horace Silver took a, well, Horace Silver's an American, he was, he was a jazzer, he was an American, but he took a trip to Brazil and uh, heard some Brazilian folk music, and he wrote this song to uh, celebrate his father, uh, who had grown up teaching this sort of Portuguese traditional music. And I think the idea was that Horace Silver never gave it too much of a thought, he never cared too much for it. When he was growing up, sometimes when you're growing up, you know the stuff that your parents are into is not what you're into. Uh, and then he uh, sort of had second thoughts about that when he was uh, when he was grown, and so he wrote this song for my father to kind of celebrate that uh, that Portuguese those Portuguese roots that his father had, and specifically uh, from the Cape Verde Island. We're going to do uh, having met Miss Jones now. Here's a little bit of a different story. Uh, Rising Heart from the '30s, kind of a nice uh, kind of nice big band arrangement that we've adapted. Thanks again, everybody, for coming. I hope you appreciate this. Uh, Happy Met Miss Jones.
have of course uh, Lil Darwin, Big Lad Neil Hefty. Uh, like the program says, but of course uh, made popular by Count Basie, right? We associate that thing with Count Basie. If you haven't seen that, check that out on YouTube. Count Basie Band doing Lil Darwin. That's uh, that's a nice piece. Um, they do it almost as good as us. Almost as good. You can laugh at that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Blue Bosses now. Blue Bosses.
we're uh, we're calling that the COVID blues. That's uh, that's just something that <laughs> that we put together because uh, it's fun to play the blues. So uh, call the COVID blues just because uh, it seems like COVID has determined just so many uh, so so many different uh, details of what we're doing um, and how we're doing it. So uh, it's like sort of uh, cast its uh, it has left its mark on the next semester in our year. But uh, but we're responding. We're responding by playing the blues. Uh, we're going to close out our program tonight with uh, Once I Love. So we have played a couple things that are uh, Brazilian influence. And Once I Love is, uh, is a tune that's actually written by a uh, Brazilian composer, Antonio Carlos Jardim. Um, one of the nice things about working, uh, about working here is that there's, um, there's a music library. And uh, it, it was kind of a mess, but we're organizing it. <coughs> And uh, and it, so I found this tune in the library in the file cabinet. The tune it has a copyright of 1967, and that's when that's when the pieces of paper are from 1967. Uh, so I pulled it out of the file cabinet, and um, honestly, it was in pristine condition. It was like no one had ever opened this piece of paper. This, this chart is older than me, and I feel like nobody's ever, there might be some pencil marks on somebody, so maybe somebody would have uh, read through it at some point. But um, this, uh, this chart, I think, sat in the file cabinet for a long time, but it's seen the light of day today. Uh, Once I Love by Antonio Carlos Jardim. Hey, thanks everybody for coming tonight. Uh, you've been a great audience, and uh, it's just really fun to play somebody. We've been, that's for somebody, uh, for people. We have been rehearsing uh, for only six weeks, We've been rehearsing outdoors because uh, uh, because it's been nice. It's been nice the, the last six weeks when it wasn't getting in February. So um, students here have been working pretty hard, and it's just really great to be able to present this to you tonight.
just bow down, but I just want to say a couple more things. So this has been a great group to work with this semester. I feel really lucky. I just want to call out just some of the great things that happened this semester. So I'm going to start over here uh, with Cecily. I feel really lucky to be working with Cecily. Cecily's been in our group for a while. Uh, she uh, is a member of the Ensemble Team Community Ed. And, um, and Cecily has been uh, cutting into the section. You might notice that it's harder to, uh, it's harder for a flute to match some of these other instruments because it's not to require an instrument. So she's been cutting into the texture this semester. It's just really like I haven't heard this one. Uh, we were really kind of like an equal member of the ensemble in terms of, uh, almost in terms of volume, and then we made up for it in, in expressiveness. So I was really happy to have her. I am a nice guy, and I could do this for everybody, but I'm going to deal with the saxophones as a group. I, <laughs> I, I really feel lucky to have the saxophone section that we had this time. I don't know if you heard, but man, it was like, it, was, it really was like four fingers on one hand a lot of the time. This is a group that reads everything that I put in front of them, and they're uh, happy to jump in and improvise. They've taken to the challenge of improvising. For some of them, it was kind of a new thing this year, uh, or something they were more unfamiliar with. They've all developed as improvisers, and just, man, what an ensemble, what cohesion with the saxophone, so uh, thank you for doing such a great job. Mm -hmm. I want to call out Elliot in the back, who's holding up the uh, holding down, maybe I should say, holding down the brass section all by himself. So, Elliot, <coughs> yeah, you can squeeze out there if you want. Uh, it's just really nice to have uh, a trumpet player back there uh, who has such a orchestral sense of phrasing and then uh, also just has enough like natural extroversion to um, to also just really uh, splat and bat and do that when, when he needs to. So I really felt like I just got such a full panorama. I hope you heard that tonight. You know, just a full pan panorama of how our trumpet can contribute to uh, texture of a piece like this. So it was really great to have you. What's that? Still off the mini golf? <laughs> yeah, we're not talking about that. <laughs> uh, it was really nice to have Dalton with us this semester. It was his first semester in the group. Dalton, it was really great to have a guitar player. I don't know if you know this, but a guitar player who could, he could really drive this ensemble all by himself uh, when he gets going. And just a really uh, proficient, uh, sophisticated soloist. So uh, that was really, uh, that was a nice high bar of musicianship that you set for us. Thanks for being here. <laughs> it's been great to have Ibel and Gabe, and I will deal with Ibel and Gabe as a group because they should be thinking of themselves as a group. <laughs> but uh, Ibel and Gabe, we had them uh, last semester, and then into this semester, uh, uh, this was a new instrument for Gabe this year with the drums. I'm not saying he never played the drums, but he's played other things for this group. And uh, uh, just the amount of progress from when you guys first started playing together back in September and then all the way to this semester, I mean, it was, it was really like night and day. It was great to have you in the beginning, but it was really great to have you tonight. It was really great to have you so tight. So I really appreciate you. <laughs> I'm also really happy to have Elliot Etzkorn here on the piano. Elliot filled in. Uh, he made it really easy for me to just direct this semester and not have to mess around with the piano. And so you thought tonight, I could play this piano just for fun. I could play this piano when I had nothing else to do, but I didn't have to worry about it the rest of the time. Uh, Elliot is fearless, and as you could hear, uh, he really knows his way around the keyboard. He was able to really uh, play big when he needed to play big and play small when he needed to play small. So I really appreciate it. I want to call out Jeff Fucci on the bass. Jeff, uh, like me, is a hired professional. Uh, we brought him in because uh, everybody needs a bass player. So uh, Jeff teaches uh, bass at Bethel College and privately. And um, I believe he's doing a little piano training right now. I've already given you a couple of referrals. So, <laughs> so uh, I'd, I'd like to give a round of applause to Jeff. It was really, it, it really kind of feels like last night. Uh, we're almost done, but we just want to do a couple more things. 
Uh, so there's a few people that are not going to be in this group anymore, and I'd like you to come on up. Uh, I, b I believe that would be Gabe. Gabe might be in the group anymore, but I'm still going to have him come on because you're going to graduate, right? He's going to come back, but I'm still going to have him come up because he's graduating now. It's important. So you can come up, Gabe. And I believe Caleb is graduating. Let's have Caleb come on up. And I believe Johnny is graduating. Let's have Johnny come on up. And I think, I think that's everybody. I don't think anybody else is graduating. You're not going to tell me if you are, are you? Wendy's probably graduating. She probably has been all her, all her courses. And 16 months or something. Okay. Um, why don't you come on up to the mic? Uh, we're going to start with Caleb. State in the fall, so uh, I've been here since January of 2020, and then I'm going to go to Utah State, which is in northern Utah, and uh, major in English teaching. So, yeah. Caleb, uh, this was Caleb's first year in the group. Uh, great to have you. Great to have you. Uh, we're going to talk to Johnny next. Johnny's graduating. What are you graduating with, Johnny? Uh, getting a certificate in IT. Cool, you can talk to that. Uh, Johnny, what are your plans after this? Uh, still figuring these things out. Uh, might do a little bit of traveling. Cool. I didn't, uh, I didn't prepare anybody for this, so I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Johnny has been in the group since I began, which was two years ago. Uh, so all four semesters, Johnny has been with me, and uh, um, uh, like Gabe, you are and like Caleb, who is going to Utah, but you're always free to come back. Um, but I have a feeling that if you're traveling, we might not be seeing too much of So thank you for being such a great member of this group for the last few years while you've been living. And I especially want to honor Gabe, because he's going to be the one that's most embarrassed <laughs> as they're talking about him. Yeah. Uh, Gabe, what's your degree in? In uh, sound art. Recording engineering, that's what I'm supposed to do. I want to, I just want to uh, honor Gabe tonight, uh, point out that uh, Gabe is the only person in this group that was here before me. He's been here longer than me. Uh, so he's been here more than four semesters, and he has played three different instruments in the group. Uh, when I came, he was the piano player, and then he played some flute, and now he's the drummer. Uh, so it's just, uh, it's just been really great to have you and to work with you all the time, and I do hope that you come back in the fall. I just wanted to mark this uh, for you that you're graduating and you got that sound art to be uh, by it's, it's cool. Do you have plans for next year then? Um, no, not really. I have no idea. But yeah, thank you, Caleb. That was a lot of fun. Gabe Brown. All right. <laughs> Once again, thanks everybody for being here. Uh, I hope you appreciated our music tonight and uh, just uh, celebrating the accomplishments of our students here at Minneapolis College. Thanks a lot, and we will see you in the fall.
Someone's chatting here. Oh, do I do a look? Oh, uh, I couldn't really zero out the mic. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I have. I was just on my phone, so no good speakers. I had to turn all the way around. I, I think we need to look at those levels a little harder. Mm -hmm. Brian's like, well, where was it? We got to leave room for peaking. I'm talking about kind of the old world, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, those are really no one. Okay. 